Our top story tonight, the bombshell report from a joint congressional task force detailing how U.S. Central Command falsified and doctored Islamic State intelligence report. Congressman Mike Pompeo, one of the task force leaders, explains the findings. It was being manipulated in one direction. The changes all made it appear that the United States was being more successful in defeating ISIS than it really was. You remember the president called ISIS the JV. He said that al-Qaeda was on the run. And senior intelligence leaders were molding intelligence to fit that storyline. They were telling the American people that we were being victorious when, in fact, ISIS was on the march all throughout Syria and Iraq. A stunning conclusion, a stunning report, also a task force leader on this shocking report, Congressman Brad Winstrup. Winstrup is a member of both the Armed Services and Veterans Affairs Committees. He also serves on the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. He's also a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserves and a medical doctor. Uh, Congressman, great to have you here. I have Good to, to be say, with you, Lou. This, the finding of this report should result in the prosecution of people, should it not? I mean, this is falsifying intelligence. This is by men and women in our armed services playing to the political direction ordered by the White House. It's, it's appalling. Well, we're not finished yet. Uh, this is a preliminary report. This is, to me, it's phase one of what we wanted to discover. Whistleblowers came forward and said that their analysis of intelligence in Iraq was being suppressed, that it was being watered down. There was a survey done where over 40% of the uh, analysts in, in the Central Command were saying this. This was not happening at the other command. Surveys were done there as well. That alone should have alerted leadership that we have a problem here. One of the explanations that we got was, well, we only wanted to put forth intelligence that had 100% certainty. Well, anybody who knows how that works, you never have 100% certainty, or very rarely do you have 100% certainty. But for the combatants in the field, they need to know exactly what's out there and to what degree the threat is. And so they started taking their information from the operational side, what people on the ground were fighting, what they saw, rather than what the intelligence community was seeing throughout the whole theater. Well, you know, in point of fact, that makes a lot of sense. There's an old rule, and in both intelligence and journalism, take first the view from the ground and whoever is taking up space on that ground. But I, I've got to say, Congressman, 50 intelligence analysts over a year ago told everybody that there is a problem with these people in CENTCOM and they are distorting intelligence and doing mm -hmm. so to win or at least uh, uh, either political favor or uh, to avoid uh, a, a problem and friction and conflict with the White House. I, I mean, why are we talking about this so late? Why hasn't something been done? My God, we've still got men and women in harm's way in this, in this fight. What are we, well, what kind of military do we have? What kind of command structure do we have? What kind of Congress and White House do we have that this takes over a year to take to conclusion? Well, as you know, it, we, many of the things that we asked for, we still haven't gotten, and we're waiting to hear what the IG report says as well as we continue to push forward. As someone who serves, I want to know every bit of intelligence that I can. I don't want anything suppressed. I want to be able to have it. I, it is beyond me that this is taking place within the military, and there are examples. You'd hear the Central Command saying, uh, basically, like you said before, that they're on the run, uh, that they're taking a different posture, they're in a defensive posture, and then a, a little bit later, later, Ramadi falls. And so we're seeing different reports in front of Congress from General Austin, who's, who's saying that we've broken their command and control. Yeah. And a little bit later, Brennan is saying that they're organized, they're disciplined, they're committed to the battle, and they have revenue. I mean, th this, is, this is a horrible thing that and shows what a complete breakdown there is. And what we're trying to find is where the nefarious behavior is coming from. Well, and I commend you for that and, uh, and your colleagues, Congressman Pompeo and others. Uh, mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, Donald Trump says that President Obama and Hillary Clinton are the co-founders of the Islamic State. This report suggests he's exactly right. 
Well, there are some people that think that if they say something, therefore it is, and that is not the fact. And so, unfortunately for our troops and for our country, there are people that have to endure what's really going on as opposed to the fantasy that's being put forward. And that's the situation we find ourselves in, in with this. And it was during this certain time frame, if we did the interviews during this time, currently things seem to be better. You know, uh, Mr. Trump's going to say what he has to say. I will always contend that we never should have left Iraq. We won that war, by the way. We had a lot of people that gave their lives in, on behalf of that war. We won it, and we let it well, go. You could argue that we've won it twice, uh, in point of fact. But you also can argue that a military that has a General David Petraeus setting forth doctrine that's called the Long War, and we are still in conflict 15 years after the attack, uh, the attacks of September 11, 2001, is a military mm -hmm. with its head uh, securely directed in the wrong direction. Well, when you hear someone say that ISIS is just a bunch of guys with, with rifles and pickup trucks, mm -hmm. and they're not gone, well, obviously, you don't have good intelligence. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it, it's incredible. Uh, the Clinton email scandal, uh, goes mm -hmm. on without, uh, without consequence. The Clinton Foundation uh, looks for all the world like a, not a hedge fund, as Donald Trump has described it. It frankly looks like a contraption of subterfuge uh, to avoid U.S. law that requires that foreign governments stay out of U.S. presidential elections uh, created just for that purpose. Is there going to be any consequence uh, in your judgment, Congressman? Well, unfortunately, we're seeing a level of, uh, of, uh, of untrustworthiness that I don't think we've ever seen before in public office. I'm old enough to remember Watergate, and the yeah. stuff that people are getting away with today is just beyond my imagination. And, you know, when I came into Congress, I had to give up all kinds of connections uh, that, so that there's never any inference of impropriety. Right. Uh, and, and we're just not seeing this, and they just continue to get away with it. And you mentioned the mainstream media before, and i got to agree with you. It's just unbelievable. How much are you going to put up with? My question to people out there, is this somebody that you'd leave your children with? Because it's not me. Yeah, and I think it's a great question. Uh, but it's our children and our grandchildren and theirs. Mm -hmm. I, we're talking about a very important election. And if people have no more sense, courage, energy, uh, than to stand up with integrity and say this will not stand, uh, then this country will not stand. Congressman Brad we've Winstrup, all, we've all, <laughs> you get we've all got to do it. Yes, sir. I said we've all got to do it. I, we've all got to do it, and I appreciate you, you pounding away on it. Congressman, and I thank you for your, uh, your service to the nation, uh, which is in full. Thanks so much. Brad Winstrup.